The UN Climate Summit has finally come to an end with an agreement on how to tackle global warming and a historic loss in damage fund. All this after weeks of negotiations by nearly 200 countries. But the summit has also left a few nations disappointed over a failure to push further on cutting emissions. Take a look at this next detailed report. Countries finally came to an agreement at the COP27 climate summit early on Sunday. It sets up a loss and damage fund to help poor countries being battered by climate disasters, but does not boost efforts to tackle the emissions causing them. After tense negotiations that ran through the night, the Egyptian COP27 presidency released the final text for a deal and called a plenary session to quickly push it through. Negotiators made no objections as COP27's president, Samir Shukri, rattled through the final agenda items in the Egyptian resort of Sharm el-Sheikh. I now invite the COP to adopt the decision entitled Funding Arrangements for Responding to Loss and Damage Associated with the Adverse Effects of Climate Change. The swift approval for creating a dedicated loss and damage fund still left many of the most controversial decisions on the fund until next year, including who should pay into it. Delegates praised the breakthrough on setting up the fund as climate justice for its aim in helping vulnerable countries cope with storms, floods and other disasters being fueled by rich nations' historic carbon emissions. But some felt the deal did not go far enough, including EU climate policy chief Franz Timmermans. This is the make or break decade. But what we have in front of us is not enough of a step forward for people and planet. It does not bring enough added efforts from major emitters to increase and accelerate their emissions cuts. It does not bring a higher degree of confidence that we will achieve the commitments made under the Paris Agreement and in Glasgow last year. It does not address the yawning gap between climate science and our climate policies. COP26 President Alok Sharma was also critical of the final text in his closing comments. Emissions peaking before 2025, as the science tells us, is necessary. Not in this text. Clear follow-through on the phase-down of coal. Not in this text. A clear commitment to phase out all fossil fuels. Not in this text. And the energy text weakened in the final minutes. Friends, I said in Glasgow that the pulse of 1.5 degrees was weak. Unfortunately, it remains on life support. Small island nations facing a climate-driven rise in sea level had pushed for the loss and damage deal, but lamented a lack of ambition on curbing emissions. The two-week summit, billed as the African COP, has been seen as a test of global resolve to fight climate change, even as a war in Europe, energy market turmoil and rampant consumer inflation distract international attention. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.